Hey guys, um, for this video, um, I just wanted to make sure that whatever that we do uh, for tomorrow will be taken care of and I just wanted to make sure that you guys were okay with long divisions because I kind of saw that you know, some of you guys were really struggling with it. So I hope that through this video, um, what, what happens is that after you see how this is really um, played out, you guys understand how to do long division and things and th uh, stuff like that. Uh, if you guys are looking for like more practice with long division, like you could actually definitely take some of these questions in which I specifically ask you to do synthetic division with, like for example, like this, like you could practice uh, long division with anything. So for example, like you could take uh, this following function here, this is page number three, and you could just like, you know, do X minus one, you know, long division wise, and you can practice it that way. And, you know, use your remainder theorem to check to see if the answer is correct. But anyways. Let me just go over with you every single problem in the study guide just to make sure that you understand how to do these types of problems. Okay, so first of all, we have 4x cubed minus 2x squared minus 3 divided by 2x squared minus 1. Okay, so for these types of questions, um, I think I show you, showed you this in Zoom as well, but briefly, for those of you who didn't really catch that, what I did was I actually purposely made this, oh, this is my fault. I purposely made a little gap between negative 2x squared and the minus 3, indicating the fact that I really have no zero in there, all right? And remember, if I have a divisor that says 2x squared minus 1, you know for a fact that I can't do any synthetic division with that, unfortunately, because I do not know what number belongs right there, okay? Like, even if you were to solve for the zeros here, like, what would you put there? And that's, that's the main, you know, that's the main struggle. All right, so what I'm going to do is I am simply going to take the, um, the, the first of each of these, like the divisor and the dividend, and then ask yourself, how many times can 2x, cu uh, 2x squared fit in 4x cubed? And the answer to this is that it's 2x, all right? And then you're going to multiply these two here, so you get 4x cubed, and then negative 1 times 2x gives you minus 2x, and notice how I'm putting it right beneath this gap here, okay, because the 2x has to be subtracted from this virtually nothing. And so, the again, the hardest part is for people to realize that I have to subtract them, so these will be subtracted. You bring down the negative 2x squared because that minus sign also comes down with it, but it's 0 minus negative 2x. Now, make sure that you distribute that negative sign here, makes this into a positive 2x, so therefore I'm going to have plus 2x, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these two things separated as negative 2x squared plus 2x. See, for those of you who kind of simply, it's like at this point in saying that, okay, I don't really get this. What, I, what my advice to you is that my question for this was not a really good example because there's that missing, um, you know, term, like X in it. So that's why it's really confusing. But if I were to give you, let's say, you know, um, maybe just fill this up with like 0x squared. I don't know if this will help you. Filling a gap in with, oh, I shouldn't be using that plus like let's say 0x squared and let's say plus 0x. If, you are, if, if you're the type of person who needs to have something there in order for you to kind of realize it, um, you know, feel free to just fill these gaps up with just zeros. Now if you take a look, these two comes out to be just negative 2x squared. Uh, 0x minus, well this was originally supposed to be minus 2x, right? That will give you plus 2x. So, you know, things of that nature. And then you bring down the minus 3 at the end, and then now here you ask yourself once again, how many times can 2x squared fit in negative 2x squared? Well, that's minus 1 times. So that's negative 2x squared here. Negative 1 times negative 1 gives you plus 1. And I'm going to write the plus 1 right underneath the minus 3. Why? Because this, these two are like the same like nature in terms of numbers. Like negative 3 and plus 1, yeah, I can do the math with those two. Like I don't want to write down plus 1 right next to this. I don't want to do that because I cannot combine 2x with 1, right? Like 2x has to be combined with their own species with like x's with. Uh, like it ha if it was like 1x, then of course I would, I would just write underneath 2x, but that's not the case here. So I'm just going to erase this and put the plus 1 right below the negative 3. And then I am going to subtract. Don't ever forget to subtract those guys. And then they subtract and then they cancel each other out nicely. So that's 2x brings down and minus 3 minus 1. 
I can just fill this up with plus 0x if that helps you. So minus 3 minus 1 will give you minus 4. So therefore, my final answer here would be 2x minus 1 with the remainder of 2x minus 4. Or you can write it as 2x minus 1 plus 2x minus 4 over the divisor 2x squared minus 1. Okay, so this would be how I write the answer here. Uh, the next one, you see the first question, the instruction was to use long division, but I asked you to specifically um, clarify, um, or is it clear that out and say, you can use either long division or synthetic division, it's up to you. Why do I want to use long division for the first was because I have x squared as a divisor. This one is a plain old x minus 2, so why would I bother doing long division? when I can do a really nice synthetic division with this, 1, 2, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, negative 4, and then that's 1. So then here is going to be uh, my final answer. I just want to double check to make sure everything worked out okay. So that's x squared minus 2x minus 2 with this remainder of plus 1 over x minus 2, or you can write it as x squared minus 2x minus 2 with the remainder of 1. Either one of these two should be fine. Okay, next, here we want to use the long and synthetic division to get the same answer. Synthetic division, you would use negative 3, 1, 3, negative 1, negative 1, 6, 1, negative 3, 0, which makes it a little awkward. 0 times negative 3 is 0, negative 1, 3, that's 2, negative 6, and 0. And look at that, I have a remainder for 0, and I would write this as our divisor, uh, I'm sorry, that as our quotient, which my answer will turn out to be x cubed plus 0x squared minus 1x plus 2. Or you can just write it as x cubed minus x plus 2 because the 0x squared, I don't have to write that. All right, so now I have that as my function. And now let's say I try to do long division with this. Okay, so the long division here, what I would do is I would write down painstakingly every single one of these terms. So x to the fourth plus 3x cubed minus x squared minus x plus 6. And this is going to be x plus 3. Oh boy, here we go. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write x cubed here because x fits in x to the fourth x cubed times. Multiply those two together, get x to the power of 4, times that plus 3x squared. Now, what really confuses a lot of students was that when you subtract these, both of these cancels out really nicely. But quite honestly, if that's, that was the case, then you should just say, hey, I'm in luck, because it actually creates less work for you to do so. Bring down the negative x squared. But you see, if you just bring down negative x squared, and you're dealing with two terms when you multiply them, might as well just bring down the minus x2, and here's the reason why. So you're going, to multi you're going to ask yourself once again, how many times can x fit in the negative x squared? And you would say, hey, that fits in negative x times. Okay? Keep on checking your math with your answer you got from the synthetic division as well. All right, so now I have that out of the way. All right, so let's multiply. Okay. x times negative x. Well, that gives me negative x squared. 3 times negative x. Well, that gives me negative 3x. Do you see why I wrote down those two terms in the first place? It's because I want to align those two numbers like you know, so in such a way that now I can like subtract them like this. So I can cancel these out. If I did not bring down the minus x in the first place, like imagine I had this. Like you would be very confused because what would I subtract minus 3x with? You know what I mean? That's why you want to I want to go back to. Oh, it doesn't go back all the way. So I want to bring down the minus x out along down as well so that I'm taking minus x and subtracting the minus 3x from it, which makes it plus 3x, so I'm going to get 2x here. Bring down the plus 6, and the final nail in the coffin would be to put the plus 2 at the end, 2x plus 6, and my remainder would be 0. Therefore, my quotient would be x cubed minus x plus 2 with the remainder of 0. And look at that. My answer matches exactly. Next question, solve for the zeros of the following polynomials using what you know about the remainder theorem. Now this is a type of question where you would just have to keep on checking for the numbers here. So let's say for example, like I try f of 1, do I get a 0? f of negative 1, do I get a 0? And you keep on checking that way. Okay, so the calculator portion I'm not really able to show you because you're going to be able, you're going to have to use that on your own. But let's just supposedly say that I am trying to figure this out on my own. Okay, alright, so... I'm going to go to my calculator here. Um, well, first of all, I have to kind of memorize this. But All right, so I'm on my calculator here. And let's see. I, I got to be on my... Okay, so first, let's say I type in 1. 
and then I store that into the x, and then I physically type 2x to the power of 3, and then minus 5x squared, minus 14x, plus 8. And so I get a minus 9. All right, that's no good. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to just store a different number for x. And then I'm going to give that another try. Get 15. Okay, this is getting kind of annoying. Let's try 2. Would that work for me, please? Okay, that doesn't work. All right, I'm going to try. Oops. I'm going to try negative 2 for my x. All right, I hope that works. And, you know, you, you're going to keep on repeating this process over. And look at that. Lo and behold, I get a 0 for one of my um, functions here. So then what I'm going to do then is go back to my um, work here. So all of this did not work, but f of negative 2 gave me a 0. Hey, I found one of the zeros that's actually going to work. Synthetic division, please. Bring down the 2, negative 4, negative 9, 18, 4, negative 8, 0. Here's where a lot of kids struggle with the quadratic. Guys, if you guys are able to do the quadratic portion, you... I mean, you should be able to, but what I'm trying to tell you is that you, app, this is the new stuff I'm teaching you. This is the old school stuff that I hope you guys all remember. And so for those of you who need practice, if you just search up like factoring questions online, you know, AC method and that sort of thing, you know, I think that would be a way to go. But let me explain to you how this works. A times C here is 8 because you're taking a look at 2 and the positive 4. And when you multiply these two, you get 8, and the two numbers that multiplies to give you 8, but gives you negative 9 when you add them is negative 8 and negative 1. So I'm going to separate the 2x squared and the plus 4, and the minus 9, I'm going to separate it into minus 8x minus 1x, because this essentially gives you minus 9x from the original function anyways. So I haven't really changed anything like I said before. All right, so then I what I like to do is I kind of think of it as drawing a wall. Factor out the greatest common factor, which is 2x on the left, negative 1 on the right, x plus 4, x plus 4. Remember, the x plus 4 is what's common in both of those terms. So you put that in one of the parentheses. And what belongs in the other parentheses is the, the leftover residue, which is 2x minus 1. So there we go. We factor it out completely. I'm not quite done yet because I need to solve for the zeros here. That's negative 4 when you solve for the 0. And that's 1 half when you solve for the 0. Well, where did, you, where did you end up getting that? Okay, just set x plus 4 equal to 0. Subtract 4 on both sides. You get x equals negative 4. 2x minus 1 equals 0. Add 1. Divide by 2. I got a half. So that's where those numbers come from. So what would I say to answer, my que answer the question? Uh, solve for the zeros. That was our original. So you would say x equals negative 4. x equals positive 1 half. And x equals negative 2. That's the first answer, to answer that we got by using the remainder theorem. And you can just highlight that for me on your, on your quiz, indicating the fact that those three would be the zeros here. All right, for the next question, I have 3, 8, negative 20, and negative 16. And then I'm going to do synthetic division with that. Uh, but I need to figure out what this specific number is by using the remainder theorem. So let's go to our trusty, trusty calculator here. Okay, and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in 1, store it into the x one more time, and physically type in 3x to the power of 3. Uh, plus 8x squared, uh, minus 20x, uh, minus 16. All right, that doesn't work out. What about negative 1 stored into the x? And just copy and paste that. 9, all right, no good. Let's try 2. All right, 2 works out. There we go. So going back to this, I'm going to plug in 2, bring down the 3, 6, 14, 28, 8, 16, 0. So I got 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. Okay, another complicated quadratic question that I have to deal with. But again, AC method, 100% of the time it works out. A times C here should give me 3 times 8, which is 24. Two numbers that multiplies to give you 24 but adds to give you 14. Hmm, that's a tricky one. But that should turn out to be 12 and 2. So I'm going to change this 3x squared plus 14x plus 8. I'm rewriting this equation right up here. And I'm separating this into 12x plus 2x, bring on the plus 8, bring on the 3x squared. Draw the wall. Factor the 3x, that's the greatest common factor. Factor the 2, x plus 4, x plus 4. x plus 4 is a common term in both of these, so those two would be, um, that would be definitely one of the parentheses. And remember what I told you, whatever is left over, the 3x and the 2 belong in the other parentheses. 
So that means it's x equals negative 4, x equals negative 2 over 3, and also x equals 2 from the synthetic division. Those three would be the zeros there. All right, for the final question, this is a real tricky, but then the answer to these uh, questions is as following. P of A equals negative 7. Well, what does this number represent? Is that this number always represents the remainder. So if we say that the remainder is negative 7, if you set that as one of your answers, then that's perfect. X minus 7 is a factor. Well, that makes no sense because right here, if we're plugging in the A, that means we're actually dealing with X minus A here to find out the remainder theorem. And so it should not say X minus 7 even from the first place. Now, is X minus A a factor of P of X? That's what C says. Maybe I should erase the, um, the entire part here so it's easier for us to see. Um, definitely one of the answers is N's choice B. X minus A is a factor? Nope. Why not? Because your remainder is not zero. It can't be a factor. A is one of the zeros? Again, no. Because if C was false, D would also be hand by hand in hand. It's also going to be false. X minus A is not a factor? Absolutely. Why? Because remainder is not zero. That means it's not a factor. X plus 7 is a... Nope. Because I told you it, we're talking about X minus A, not X plus 7. The 7 has everything to do with the remainder, not factor. So the answer to the question for this on the last page, for the first question is just B and E. Uh, for the second question, I specifically gave you P of A is 0 to indicate the fact that I have a remainder of 0. That means several things. First of all, X minus A is definitely a factor. Okay, that means E is out because that's kind of completely vice versa. And A is definitely one of the zeros of the function because you literally got 0 when you plugged in an A. So C and D is true. The value of A is 0, well, technically, F is not going to be tr true at all. I mean, A could be 0, but what if A was 1? What if you tried the remainder theorem with 1 and you ended up getting a 0? That means your 0 happened to be at 1. So who knows? So F is not a potential, like, it could be potentially be an answer, but it's, you know, it's not a must-be situation. We're always looking for, like, a must situation here. All right, so then we are down to A and B. X minus 0 is a factor of P of X. That is not true. X minus A is a factor, not X minus 0. The remainder is 0? Yes, absolutely, because obviously you can clearly see in the equation that the remainder is 0. So the answer to this, B, C, and D. All right, hope this video helped out. Um, you know, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me for Schoology message. You know, you guys not, have nothing to worry about. You know, it's going to be very straightforward. Practice on your long division. I think everyone's good with synthetic division and, you know, factoring out, finding the zeros. You will not be dealing with quartic functions. When I say quartic, I mean like x to the power of 4. You're not going to be dealing with any of that. Practice cubic functions only. Cubic functions only, okay? I know I gave you a quartic function here. Like, um, where is it? Like for this one. I know I gave you a quartic function, but the only reason I did that is because like two, like, uh, like they canceled out right away from the beginning and it really made our math a lot easier to work with. You know, it wasn't that much of a big deal, but I'm only going to give you cubic polynomials to work with on the quiz, so you don't have to worry about that. All right, um, thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Study, and I'll see you tomorrow.